cucurbit disease management in the, in the home vegetable garden. Um, and so here again is that IPM pyramid. You all are gonna be able to reproduce this thing by the time I'm done with my presentation. Because repetition, you know, it, it's, it's helpful for us all. Um, and so once again, for most effective disease management, start at these fundamental levels and work your way up toward the more toxic levels um, in terms of chemistries. So early season in cucurbit disease management in the home garden, um, we want to be sowing fungicide or heat treated seed. The only heat treated seed that will be available um, for cucurbits is generally cucumber. Other, other seeds aren't effectively heat treated. Um, some of those can be fungicide treated, however, and that can, that can help guard against some of these pythium damping off diseases. Um, and so it's important with cucurbits to, to sow those into warmed soils um, that are well drained. Cucurbits aren't frost tolerant at all and so you want to be past that last frost state. Um, I can't emphasize resistant varieties enough. Um, in Kentucky, here in Kentucky, downy mildew is probably the most important disease that home gardeners will have to guard against. Um, and unfortunately, we only have some tolerance to downy mildew in our, in, in our cucurbit crops. Um, we don't have full resistance. And so going along with that, we don't have a lot of chemical options that are effective for downy mildew. And so resistant varieties are really where it's at for the home gardener. Um, and I wrote there, it's not a matter of if we get downy mildew, it's a matter of when. Um, powdery mildew is also common, but luckily we have more selections of resistant varieties to powdery mildew in, in cucurbits. Um, and then when vines begin to run early in the season, those vines should be trained down the row. Um, this prevents you from stepping on them, it prevents them from jumping into the lawn and being mowed because any plant injury is, gonna, is a potential mode of ingress for pathogens. Um, and then down here on this photo, um, it's a little bit dark, but, but I have two butternut squash leaves here. Um, and they're co-infected with both powdery mildew and downy mildew. So on the tops of the leaves, um, powdery mildew can proliferate. It's these white to gray um, sporulating areas. It's not limited by leaf veins. Um, in, drier le in drier years, you'll see a lot of powdery mildew on the tops of the leaves. In wetter years, you see powdery mildew more on the bottom. Um, in wet years, downy mildew is, is more of a problem generally than in drier years. Um, downy mildew causes chlorotic areas on the tops of the leaves bordered by leaf veins. And then on the bottom of the leaf, the sporulation is dark. And that's, again, that's bordered by leaf veins. I think of it as kind of a stained glass window appearance with downy mildew. So, um, Continuing in mid-season, it's important to manage weeds, um, prevent fruit from contacting the soil by placing them on top of the mulch. Um, row covers are really important to reduce the incidence of bacterial wilt, which is vectored by striped and spotted cucumber beetles. Um, that pathogen actually overwinters within the beetles, and so gardens that have heavy cucumber beetle pressure um, are more likely to have issues with, with bacterial wilt. Um, and then also avoid wetting leaves by watering at the soil line. In mid to late season, again, you want to avoid working plants when they're wet. Um, working plants when they're wet, that just introduces more injuries. Um, mulch is so important in the home garden. Um, I've already kind of gone over that um, for weed management as well as or introduction of organic material. Um, and then fungicides can be applied to manage fungal leaf spots. I mentioned before that copper is really the only chemical approach that home gardeners have to manage bacterial diseases. But I want to emphasize here in the cucurbit section that copper isn't effective on bacterial wilt and it's also not effective on bacterial fruit blotch. It's not effective on bacterial wilt because that pathogen is so closely associated with the beetles and it's not effective on fruit blotch. Um, because that pathogen is seed transmitted. 
Um, and another point of emphasis is that sulfur shouldn't be used on cucurbits at all. And so there are, there are relatively few organic approaches to managing disease in cucurbits in terms of chemicals.